In mathematics and computer science, an optimization problem is the problem of finding the best solution from all feasible solutions. Now this is a rather technical sounding definition provided to us by Wikipedia. But what's important to hone in on here is the word best. What we're really doing in an optimization problem is we're trying to minimize or maximize an equation depending on our desired goal. An example of doing this might be maximizing the area of a shape inscribed inside of a circle, or in the case of a factory, minimizing production costs while maximizing the number of items produced. Over the coming minutes, you will see a number of examples of both minimization and maximization problems. In this problem, we have been asked to determine the radius r and the height h of the most economical can, given the fact that the material for the top and the bottom costs $10 per meter squared, and the material for the side costs $8 per meter squared. The can is supposed to hold a total of 20 pi meters squared to the third. As in the previous example, we start off our first step making a diagram so we can visualize the scenario. As you can see in the diagram, we have a cylinder with a height of h and a radius r. Just like we did in the first problem, our second step is going to be to find an equation for the geometric solid we're working with. Since in this example we're working with a cylinder, we'll use the equation for the volume of a cylinder. V is equal to pi r squared times the height. Pretty simple. Our third step, as in our first example, is to determine the constraints of the equation. In this in the question, we're told that the cylindrical can is to hold 20 meters to the third of, of volume. So this gives us our first constraint, which is that our volume must equal 20 meters to the third. In fact, we can leave off the units for now. We'll put those back in later. Our second set of constraints are the costs. We're told that it's $10 per meter squared for the material on the top and the bottom, and it is $8 per meter squared for the material on the two sides. So we'll use A sub F to represent the material on the, the area of the top and bottom faces. So the area of the top and the bottom faces is going to be pi r squared for the top plus again pi r squared for the bottom which is really just 2 pi r whoops, squared. For the area for the sides, we'll use a sub s for the sides. And then our a sub s will be simply the equation for the rectangle, which is sort of wrapped around the cylindrical can, which will have a width, which is going to be equal to 2 pi r, the equation for the circumference of a circle, if you recognize that, and times h, since that will be the height of the rectangle wrapped around the cylinder, which gives us the area of the sides. Lastly, we have the constraint for the total costs of this we have the constraint for the total cost of the can. We'll use P to represent the price. So P will be equal to eight times the A sub S plus ten times A sub F. Since this is eight times the cost of the material on the sides, so sorry, eight times the area of the material on the sides, plus 10 times the area of the material on the faces, which gives us the total cost in accordance with the prices given to us in the question. In step 4, we will be attempting to solve the equations we got in steps 2 and 3 in order to get an expression in terms of a single variable. In this case, we will be trying to solve to get an equation in terms of r. We can start out by looking at the equation we got in step 2, v is equal to pi r squared h. Since we know from our constraints that v is going to be equal to 20 pi, we can start out by setting those equal to one another. So 20 pi is going to be equal to pi r squared h. Now, we can solve this equation to get h in terms of r, which gives us h is going to be equal to 20 divided by r squared. The pi's cancel each other out. Next, let's take a look at the expression for the price we got in step 3. We know that our price is going to be equal to 8a sub. So we know that our price is going to be equal to 8a sub s plus 10a sub f. 
but we also have expressions for both a sub s and a sub f. So what we'll do is we'll try plugging those expressions into our price equation, which gives us p is equal to h times 2 pi r h plus 10 times 2 pi r squared. Next, since we have h in terms of r, we can plug that into our expression for the price. This will give us 16 pi r times 20 divided by r squared plus 20 pi r squared. And now if we multiply all this out, we get a final expression in the form 30, it's sorry, 320 pi divided by r plus 20 pi r squared is the price. In our fifth and final step, we can take the derivative of the equation we got in step 4 and use this to determine both the radius and the height of the cheapest possible barrel. So, first we will take a standard derivative, which we've all done before, which gives us p prime is equal to negative 320 pi divided by r squared plus 40 pi r squared. Now, having determined this derivative, we'll shuffle numbers around a little bit by basically multiplying everything by pi cubed in order to get everything over one fraction, which will give us something of the form 40 pi times r to the third minus h, and then all of that divided by r squared. So it may be a bit hard to see, but this is actually still the same form. You can try multiplying it out if you want to verify that. So we can determine that p prime will be equal to 0 when r is equal to 2, since basically the zero, 0 of r to the third minus 8 is going to be negative 2, or positive 2. So I just, sorry, just positive 2. Whoops. So p prime is equal to 0 when r is equal to 2. And then we can confirm that this is in fact a minimum of the equation, since we know that p prime of 1 is in fact going to be less than 0, and we know that p prime of 3 is going to be greater than 0, which tells us that it's going to be sloping downwards, and then as it approaches 2, it will slope upwards again. Okay, so our last step is simply determining the height, since we already have the radius, which is r, which is half of our answer, since remember we were trying to find the dimensions. We know that the height is equal to 20 divided by r squared, so Whoops. So we can say that 5 is going to be 20 divided by 4, since 4 is the radius squared, and that gives us 5 as our h. So In this problem, we are given a rather fun example. In League of Legends, a player's effective health when defending against physical damage is given by E equals H times 100 plus A divided by 100, where H is the health and A is the armor. Health costs 2.5 gold per unit, and armor costs 18 gold per unit. You have 3,600 gold. You need to optimize the effectiveness, E, of your health and armor to survive as long as possible. How much should you buy? In this problem, we can skip right past step 1, since we don't have any spatial representation for this question, since it's all about mathematical physical damage. We can also skip past step 2, pretty much, since we're given the equation right in the question, E is equal to H times 100 plus A. In this equation, our constraints are really rather simple. We're given our first constraint, which is that the price is going to be equal to 3,600, since that's how much gold we've got, and we intend to spend it all. We also know that the price is going to be equal to 2.5 times the health, since that's the cost per unit of health, and 18 times the armor, since once again that's the price of armor given to us in the class. Now that we have both our equations for equation for E and our constraints, 
we can start to solve for our equation in terms of a single variable. I'm going to start by setting 2.5h plus 18a equal to 3,600. We can start to solve this in terms of, uh, to get a in terms of h, so I'll set 18a equal to 3,600 minus 2.5h. Now I'll divide both sides by 18, and that will give us a is equal to 200 minus 5 divided by 36, all that times h. Now that we have this value for a, we can plug this into our original equation, which gives us e is going to be equal to h times 100 plus, and now our new value of a, so that's going to be 200 minus 5 divided by 36, all that times h, and all that divided by 100. There we go. Now I can do a bit of simplification, just sort of condense like terms and all that fun stuff, which will give us 300 minus 5 divided by 36 times h, parentheses, all that over 100 again. Step 5. We can finally start to solve for the maximum value for both the health and armor values that will give us the best protection. We start out with the equation E is equal to 300H divided by 100 plus 5H squared divided by 3600, which as you can see is just a multiplied out version of the equation we got in the last step of part 4. Next, we'll just do a bit more condensing and simplification, which gives us 3h minus h squared divided by 720. Okay, now we can start to take the derivative. This is a fairly simple derivative, pretty straightforward. Just give me 3 minus, minus h divided by 360, since we multiply by 2, since it was the second power. We can then solve for when e1 is equal to 0, when h is equal to 1,800. Now, to check to make sure that this is, in fact, a maximum of the equation, we know that e of 0 is going to be greater than 0, and e1, or e prime, sorry, of 3,600 is going to be less than 0 which, exactly as we expect, does indicate that this is going to be a curve that starts out heading upwards, and when it hits 1,800, starts to curve back down, and heads back towards zero. Okay. Now, as you may recall, in our, when back when we were finding the, sorry, back when we were finding our equation in terms of a single variable up here, we passed through a step where we had the armor is equal to 200 minus 5 divided by 36h. Now that we know that the equation is optimized when h is equal to 1080, we can simply plug 1080 into that equation, into that equation that we got before, which will give us a of 1080 is equal to 150. So to optimize the effective of your health and armor, you should buy 150 units of armor and 1,080 units of 